Welcome back. A Russian registered cargo ship allegedly carrying illegal weapons and explosives en route to Lagos, Nigeria, has been detained by security operatives in South Africa. According to the South African police, the vessel named Lada was seized following security checks after stopping at the eastern city of Port Elizabeth on its way from Madagascar. The police told the APF that the checks and seizure followed a tip-off by an anonymous individual adding that the weapons and explosives which were loaded in 20 containers are worth $3.5 million. Let's take a look at sports news now. Here's Olumide Macaulay. Here we go. Hello and welcome to sports news. The league management company, LMC, has proposed September the 2nd as the resumption date for the second phase of the 2018-2019 Nigeria Professional Football League season. The league, which was scheduled to resume on July 18th after going on break for the 2018 FIFA World Cup, was stalled following the leadership crisis in the Nigeria Football Federation. LMC chairman Shehu Diko confirmed to Channel Television, quote, we are currently on consultation with the particip participating clubs to agree on the most ideal program to start and conclude the league as soon as possible so as to meet with the CAF deadlines as well as harmonize the ITO Cup program within the league program, end of quote. CAF has given all countries deadline of October the 15th to produce their representatives on the continent for the 2018-2019 season. Super Eagles captain John Michelo B has pulled out of next month's 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers with Seychelles. The team's technical advisor, Gennard Raw, says Mikel will take time out from the game because he needs to be fully fit after recovering from injury, and he also needs to push his club commitments to get back in shape. Raw will unveil his squad on Friday as Super Eagles look to keep their qualification hopes alive for the 2019 tournament in Cameroon next June. The team are currently third in Group E behind leaders Libya and South Africa after a game. South Korea's new football coach Paul Bento says his new role is also about helping the next generation of Korean players to emerge. The Korea Football Association named Bento as coach last week, the former Portugal midfielder signing a four-year contract to take the side through next year's Asian Cup and the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. The 49-year-old, who also had a four-year stint in charge of his native Portugal, wants to introduce a more aggressive style of play to the national team. He'll be in charge for South Korea's friendlies against Costa Rica and Chile next month, intending to call up Newcastle United midfielder Ki Song Young. Former president of the Brazil Football Federation, Jose Maria Marin, has been sentenced by a U.S. court judge to four years in prison after being convicted on corruption charges related to the bribery scandal at FIFA. The 86-year-old was sentenced by U.S. District Judge Pamela Chen in Brooklyn, New York. He was also fined $1.2 million and ordered to forfeit $3.34 million. He was amongst the first to stand trial over what U.S. prosecutors call a sprawling scheme involving payments of more than $200 million of bribes and kickbacks in exchange for marketing and broadcast rights for soccer matches. That's it on Sports News. Ijoma will be back with the rest of the news at 10. Thanks, Olumide. There have been mixed reactions to U.S. President Donald Trump's tweet on South Africa's land reform program, in which he mentions the large-scale killing of farmers in South Africa. While there has been a lot of criticism, one group known as AfriForum claims to have influenced the U.S. President's views. The group has been lobbying globally on the issue, saying South Africa's white farmers feel under attack. Meanwhile, the country's economic freedom fighters leader, Julius Malema, says the U.S. President is not saying anything new. Malema's party has been pushing hard for land reform, and now the ruling African National Congress is pushing ahead with lands to recover without compensation. His reaction follows that of President Cyril Ramaphosa, who says the U.S. President's tweet was based on false information. A Ugandan parliamentarian, Bobby Wine, has been charged with treason in a civilian court. He's been detained along with 30 others ahead of a by-election in the northwest town of Arua before being released and re-arrested. The arrests have raised tensions across the country and sparked protests. His lawyers say that he's been assaulted in detention, which the military and President Yoweri Museveni deny. 
Those who saw him in court today says he was unable to stand by himself and there were moments he was visibly in pain. The U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened America's markets will fall if he is impeached. The U.S. President has been broad in a number of scandals involving campaign monies being used to pay off women he slept with and other illegal campaign activities. Trump said during an interview with the U.S. media that he had paid money to two women during the 2016 presidential campaign and not his lawyer, Michael Cohen, who admitted this much to a New York court on Tuesday. His comments contradict a statement made earlier by Cohen under oath in which he said the president had instructed him to make the payments. A Nigerian-born British singer Henry Olusegun Adeola, professionally known as Seal, is visiting Nigeria for the first time in 40 years. The full-time Grammy Award winner today made an unscheduled visit to the new African shrine in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, to meet Afrobeat musician Femi Kuti amidst a warm reception from fans. You know, I, I came with my son, with my eldest son, Henry, uh, who has disappeared. He's disappeared with his brother, his new brother, uh, Femi's son. And I came with him originally because he, he told me, you know, he said to me, Dad, I want to see why I look the way I do. You know, we live in America. So he said, I, I want to see the reason why I look the way I do and why you look the way you do. And I said, ah, so you want to go to Nigeria? And he said, yes, I want to go to Nigeria. So after not being here for 40 years, and the last time I was here, I was, I was 15. I'm now 55. But it was my son, my eldest son, who prompted me to bring him back to the, to the country where he, where he is from. Oh, that is so touching. And the main news again, President Muhammadu Buhari today insisted his administration remains focused on delivering campaign promises made in 2015. He also vowed not to be distracted by the opposition. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Idroma Vignato. You have a good night.